Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Nanam Paramam Dheyam Knowledge is Supreme Hello students, so far we have looked at how the simplest which is the first order dynamic system response, how then we moved on to second order dynamics and in this lecture uh, we will club anything which is of higher order than second order system as a higher order system and uh, we would see why that is done uh, in uh, just uh, next slide. So, uh, in this lecture uh, our objective uh, is to see uh, where exactly or when do we get higher order dynamics. And uh, the second part is uh, most of the times so we would be approximating all these higher order dynamics in the form of a grey box uh, model uh, no, also known as a first order plus date time model. So, we will be looking at uh, uh, all these higher order dynamics as a, an approximation and that is why we are not going to study each of them individually, but we are just going to club all of them and we would see the rationale behind this and how that is done. So, uh, we will just define any higher order system or nth order system. So, nth order dynamical system will define as an extension of how we have been defining a first order system or a second order system. So, it will be a system whose dynamics are given by nth order ordinary differential equation. So, the general form of that will be this where u is the input and y is the output and as it is an nth order system a, a n should not be equal to 0. Now, most of the times we work in the Laplace domain. So, let us try to take a Laplace transform of this that will give us the transfer function which will be y s over u s that can be obtained by taking the Laplace transform of this equation. So, we would get y s over u s for this particular case it will be b over a n s raise to n plus a n minus 1 s raise to n minus 1 plus a 1 s plus a 0, which in general form uh, can be written as some numerator polynomial in s divided by a sum polynomial denominator polynomial s. So, when we talk about an nth order system, so in that case this d s will be nth order polynomial in S. So, when we talked about a second order dynamical system that was S square. So, second order in terms of polynomial in S for a first order system it was just tau S plus 1. So, only S. Similarly, if the it is power S raised to N. So, it will be an nth order system. Uh, and then uh, we will not uh, try to find out how these systems respond uh, to a step change. Uh, what we are just going to say qualitatively is uh, if this denominator, uh, the roots of this denominator polynomial, uh, so we will try to write that. So, we will just try to find this root of the denominator polynomial in S, uh, they are also known as poles of the system and uh, this equation is known as a characteristic equation. So, when we take roots of the characteristic equation to find out the poles, so if all the poles are real, then the response of this higher order system will be similar to over damped response. So, 
so the response will be similar to an overdamped response that means no oscillations and if any root or actually pair of roots are complex in that case the system will behave similar to an underdamped response so that we will have oscillations so for an any higher order system what we are going to do is uh, we'll try to find out whether the poles are real all the poles are real uh, if they are real the system will behave more or less similar to an overdamped system uh, it will be definitely slower than a second order overdamped system but the response will look more or less similar to that and if one any of those uh, roots are uh, any is a pair of complex conjugate roots uh, then the system is going to respond similar to an underdamped system again uh, slower than a uh, second order underdamped system but based on the roots of this denominator polynomial uh, we typically are able to find uh, at least gauge how the system is going to respond to a step change so let us now look at uh, are these higher order systems common in chemical engineering uh, why do we need to study them and uh, when do we get a higher order response or a higher order dynamical system so the answer again lies as an extension of a second order system so we had seen that a second order uh, system uh, is obtained most of the times it is a series combination of two first order systems so when do we get so if i want to answer the question when do we get nth order dynamics the most common place where we get it is when we have n first order systems in series so it is just an extension of how we defined or how we found the genesis of a second order system is that we have n first order systems in series that is going to give us n th order dynamics and as it turns out uh, this is uh, quite a common phenomenon in chemical engineering so let us take an example of a distillation column so we have this distillation column uh, the feed comes in at some stage uh, we'll call it as nf the stages are numbered from top so we'll say this is tray 1 have a condenser reflux drum the product comes out here with a purity of xd uh, and then again in the stripping section we have few stages the total number of uh, stages let's say are nt and then we have this reboiler and then the product goes out at the flow rate of b and xb and we typically have feed flow f and the feed composition of zf so this is a typical uh, setup of a very conventional simple binary distillation column uh, it can be extended for any multi component distillation as well and uh, what we are uh, interested in is how does how do these product purities xd and xb change as a variation in the feed composition so let us say uh, this feed comes in from some reactor and uh, we are trying to separate unreacted reactant and the product uh, so we are interested in uh, how this separation happens so that we get the product in the de with desired specification so we are look and this uh, as this uh, zf or uh, feed to the distillation column is coming from a reactor there may be some upsets in the reactor which may cause this purity to fluctuate so zf uh, would have fluctuations uh, entering the distillation column so in that case we want to see how these fluctuations affect uh, the final product purity so we are interested in the response uh, in terms of the laplace domain what we want is how do these transfer functions look like between xd and zf and between xb and zf so in order to do that uh, we will have to use uh, material balance 
and uh, let us try to write uh, material violence for this simple system. So, we will start with the feed tray. So, if I write the dynamic material balance for the feed tray and will if we make simplifying assumptions such as uh, constant molar overflow. So, that the flow rate uh, in the rectification section and flow rate in the stripping section remains constant from tray to tray. Uh, we will also assume that uh, the liquid uh, the feed is fully total liquid or fully saturated liquid. So, these are the simplifying assumptions uh, just to show this derivation in fewer steps. Uh, it is not necessary that all these assumptions should hold to show that this is a higher order system. So, let us take the feed tray and in the feed tray uh, what is happening is uh, you have some liquid coming in from n minus 1th tray. So, the liquid flow rate we are assuming it to be constant as L and uh, composition will be x n f minus 1 and then the vapor is coming from the tray below at the flow rate of V and as a composition of Y n f plus 1. And the outlet streams are <coughs> going to be the liquid will go out at x n f and the vapor will leave as Y n f and we typically assume that these x n f and Y n f are in equilibrium. So, Y n f is a function of x n f. And then as this is a feed tray, uh, we have also one more input which is in terms of f z f. And let us say the hold up on this uh, particular tray is m n f. So, then uh, we can write the material balance for the more volatile component. It will come out to be m n f d x n f over d t is equal to L times x n f minus 1 minus x n f. This is from the liquid side. From the vapor side we have and from the feed side we have this. So, this is the equation uh, which is going to govern the response of or how the feed composition is going to affect the distillation column. And we can see that uh, this equation uh, does not contain our desired outputs which are x d or x b. So, definitely this system is not a first order system uh, in terms of x d the relationship between the purities and the final purities and the feed composition. So, what we are seeing is uh, this z f is going to first affect this x n f which is the purity of that feed tray. And eventually uh, this x n f is uh, going to affect all the other trays, uh, the trays above as well as the below. So, let us say how this uh, change propagates uh, upwards. So, when we take the balance at tray above the feed tray. So, in that case the equation would look like f m n f minus 1 d x n f minus 1 over d t is equal to l x n f minus 2 n f x n f minus 1 plus v. There is no separate feed. So, the feed term will not come here n f minus y n f minus 1. So, we can now notice that uh, the change in z f is going to affect x n f as a first order system because this relationship between x n f. So, if I want to write x n f s over z f s, it is going to be a first order system based on this equation. And, uh, we have said that this x n f and y n f are related by vapor liquid equilibrium which is a static equation. So, there is this is like a 0th order process or this is a linear this is a algebraic equation. So, similarly if I want to write y n f s over z f s 
it is also going to be a first order system and this yNF is entering here as an input. So when we talk about the transfer function between x nf minus 1 and zf, it is going to have two capacities in series. The first is this, the feed tray and the next one is the tray above the feed tray. So when we look at the transfer function between zf and x nf minus 1, it is going to be a second order dynamics. So we will have to do this uh, uh, all the way up to the top tray and in the reflu reflux drum. So what we are going to end up with is, uh, so we started with zf, so zf to xnf this is the first and then xnf and ynf are related through equilibrium and then this ynf again has a first order response with xnf minus 1 which will be in equilibrium with ynf minus 1 and then this will continue further till we get xd as the top purity and the equation for xd uh, will be this will be m d dxd over dt is equal to v times y1 minus xd. So we have to eventually go all the way up to y1 uh, when we go on reducing nf minus 1. So after n such steps uh, we would have reached y1 which will give me this first order response with xd. So what we are going to have is uh, this is a first order process, this is the second order. So when we go all the way up to nf, after nf such steps, uh, we are going to get uh, the top purity. Uh, in fact, uh, it will be nf plus 1. So the response uh, between, so when we want to write the response between xds and zfs, we have nf plus 1 first order systems in series. So this response is uh, the order of this response is definitely higher order and the order is given by how many trays are there in the rectification section. So we have nf trays in the rectification section and this one comes from the reflux drummer. So that is also first order process. So total there are nf plus 1, this is an nf plus 1 order system. So depending on how many stages you have in the distillation column, uh, we would have such higher order systems or higher order dynamics in a single distillation column and you are aware that distillation columns are one of the most commonly used separation processes in our chemical industry. So whenever we have a distillation column, we are going to have a higher order system because our distillation column is never going to have one or two trays, it is definitely going to have multiple such trays, so we will have such responses. And the same thing which uh, we can also show for the stripping section and then if we want to write uh, the bottom purity response to the feed composition change, again uh, it will be of higher order system. In that case uh, it will be the stages in the stripping section which will be nt minus nf plus 1 plus the reboiler. So these will be the these many first order systems will be in series, so that will be the order of this uh, response between xd and zf. So the whole purpose of this uh, little example was to show that uh, such higher order systems are quite common in chemical industry and if I want to show you the response of this, uh, what we are going to see is uh, the response uh, of a distillation column. Here is an example of a binary distillation column and uh, it had around uh, 95 stages, the feed was around uh, 40, uh, the middle of the column and you can see that the response uh, looks something like this. So for quite some time, almost up to first 5 minutes, uh, there is, uh, the output does not change and it is uh, quite uh, intuitive that when I change zf, the top uh, column, the portion of the column is not going to see any change happening. So unless uh, this change makes its way all the way through all the trays into the rectification section, these purities will slowly keep on changing right from xnf then xnf minus 1 
and slowly when the the final x1 changes then it is going to start showing some effect on the top purity so the response is always gonna start very slowly and then it will gonna pick up so that is a very trademark feature of any higher order system that it, they are always characterized by some dead phase where nothing happens so that is also known as a dead time and then the response uh, starts to move uh, so let's say if this was the example and the controller is placed on xd so when the controller is there on xd it is going to re reject or if it is a feedback type of a controller it is going to try to reject any changes in xd so when a disturbance in zf happens uh, it has not up to that time period let's say for example uh, for this example it was 5 minutes up to 5 minutes the controller is gonna think uh, that nothing has happened but by that time uh, the controller starts seeing that something has happened all the entire column profile has changed so all the compositions on each of the trays has changed so in that case it takes quite some time for the controller to reject all these disturbances so reject all these effects and bring the column profile to the original steady state so that is why having a dead time in the system can have very detrimental effect in terms of seeing that the disturbance has happened and also in terms of the control action that whatever action we take if uh, the response does not show any uh, change uh, then the controller will feel that uh, the effect has not happened and it will keep on increasing the manipulated input and it may happen that the in change in the manipulated input is so high uh, that uh, the system just goes out of bounds so again dead time systems are very challenging in terms of uh, control and when we look at control we'll be spending more time on that Similarly, uh, this was one example. If we take a, just a, a series combination of, of these uh, first order systems, uh, which has a time transfer function of one over two s plus one, and we are going to see how that transfer function, how the response of this uh, transfer function changes as we keep on increasing n. So when n is equal to one, we, it is a very simple first order system, and the response is the leftmost response shown in the blue color light blue color you can see that it is a very fast response and it reaches the ultimate value of 1 in this case uh, because uh, kp is considered to be 1 and uh, we are keep on increasing n so when n is equal to 2 we have a critically damped response which is slightly slower than the first order response and as we keep on increasing this n uh, we are going to see uh, that the response becomes slower and slower in control term we call it as a sluggish response and uh, you can see that when that n was equal to 8 uh, the response almost did not take off for quite some time the, the i am talking about the rightmost uh, curve here and you can see that uh, there is a significant amount of dead time and then the response shoots up so the typical feature of the second order uh, this higher order response is that they are characterized by some dead time and then there is a sigmoidal <coughs> response follows uh, which follows that and then ultimately all of those uh, reach the final value of akp so this uh, in uh, so this uh, phenomenon we will use uh, to approximate any higher order system so we are seeing that any higher order system uh, has a dead time and then followed by a very sharp response so we will be approximating these uh, higher order systems as first order plus dead time systems so we will say that uh, the response uh, looks like this so what we are seeing is this y versus t response uh, is something like this this is the ultimate value so we are going to approximate it as up to a certain time uh, nothing happens and then uh, it follows a first order response so that is how we are going to approximate uh, any higher order system as first order plus dead time so if we want to take the transfer function of this uh, so this dead time is td then the transfer function of this uh, is going to look like first order process which is kp over tau s plus 1 times the dead time transfer function is e raised to minus tds so we are going to approximate any higher order transfer function as a first order plus dead time process so uh, in terms of the parameters of, of these uh, this gain uh, so kp is gain 
and it has the same significance as the original transfer function. So, if the original transfer function had the gain of kp, even this first order plus dead time system has the same gain. So, it has the same significance as the original gain. Tau is just a mathematical entity. to match the response. Most of the time it does not have any physical significance, it is just simply gonna uh, give us uh, the best match uh, between the approximation and the original response. And then this TD is the dead time, so it characterizes or gives us how much time does it take before the system starts to move. It kind of gives you qualitatively how much is the sluggishness in the system. And it also sort of gives you what is the order of the system qualitatively because it is not going to give you the number value of the order. But as the TD increases, we will see that uh, the order of the system goes on increasing. So, let us now look at uh, how do we approximate any higher order system as a first order plus dead time model. And there are depending on what information we have, uh, we can approximate a, a higher order system as a FOPDT or a first order plus dead time system. Uh, if we have a transfer function of the system, uh, so we will take a short break here and after the break we will look at how do we approximate a higher order system as a first order plus dead time system. Thank you.